Arcage and Cheaters. While this game has a long history involving hacks, mod packs, and bug exploiting, most new players will not have heard much about it, despite it being so notorious amongst the community, to the point where well-known members of the community have been caught using mod packs, and Tryon was forced to publicly address the issue. I've even personally gone as far as looking into the game's physics and skill mechanics to see what can cause funny bugs and using fall damage negating abilities to gain advantages in 1v1 aerial scenarios. While what I personally was doing is not manable, what other players have been abusing far exceeds the requirements for a ban, to the point where some players have made the equivalent of thousands of dollars in items or gold from abusing exploits. If you're concerned about this, you should be. But most content creators that have been making videos about Arcade Unchained haven't been talking about Gamigo's solution to this, easy anti-cheat. In this video, I'm going to explain a bit of the history of Arcage, concerning mod packs, hacking, how easy anti-cheat changes things for cheaters, and how easy anti-cheat will affect you, the end user playing legitimately. In the past, Arcage has been plagued by people using mod packs to gain unfair advantages over others, to the point that Tryon had to publicly talk about one player's case on livestream, where he had been caught having a modded UI because the player himself was sending screenshots to other players, and people who recognized the modded UI linked it to a mod pack known as PoxMod. While the modified UI doesn't sound like that big of a deal, it really isn't the UI that got people upset. It was the other features of the mod pack, some of which were eventually adapted into the game itself. Arcage is run on CryEngine, which is designed to be modded. And believe it or not, mods were originally allowed in Korea when Arcage was first released. People made damage chart mods similar to Recount from World of Warcraft, DKP counters, and other convenience tailored mods. However, Exo eventually banned all mods, but that didn't keep the modders out. They instead went on to make mod packs and the FOV mod, which was eventually implemented into the game. See a bit of a trend here? While mods and mod packs were a massive problem, hacking quickly became a problem as well. You had players flying around, teleporting to your Perditas, which are each worth a thousand gold teleporting haulers full of packs, and now it has progressed to the point where people are able to abduct ships of other players and fly them into the stratosphere, and placing demo Anoans into Austera, which took Gamigo two days to remove the Anoan, even with it tanking people's frame rates due to all the collisions it was having with the terrain. People have also managed to get hacks working on the public test server, and have made red threats about it. However, they are running a version of the PTS, which doesn't have EAC enabled and have yet to realize that Gamigo is merely monitoring the PTS for hacks anyways, and not actively banning users. While it sounds bad, the hacking community for Arcage has grown smaller over the years as the game's community shrunk with it, to the point there was only a handful of players still actively hacking the game. I was able to get two people, who know quite a bit about hacking Arcage, to do an interview, one of which goes by Keem, and he was the one that was behind Followbot that was frequently posted on the Arcage subreddit. The other is the creator of Ploxmon and Derp, Plox, I'll quickly state that I don't support hacking, and hacking will ultimately get you banned. And in a game like Arcage, where your gear progression is gated behind labor, I don't think it is worth doing only to lose all that progress that you have made. When asked about the current anti-cheat, they had this to say. Glyph originally is what basically put Archbot and them into the ground because when they implemented those systems, it caught a lot of the botters. But then there was cases where people would get actioned inappropriately because sometimes those systems fail. It's Alexa. good in in the fact that when Clean was first trying to mooch my stuff, he got chained. Cool. He was 12. That's preventing a 12 year old from cheating. They also told me that Glyph was able to stop the Russian hackers purely because the Gopniks didn't want to take advice from other hackers on how to get around Glyph. They also said it was incredibly easy to avoid being detected unless you were literally fly hacking around, which for some reason you can get around being detected now by a glitch. Before Gamigo bought him out, you would teleport haulers or teleport like anything like that and within like an hour you were banned. Now, I mean, I can literally run around, get hit by the purple debuff, speed hacking, wait 15, 16 hours, come right back on, and since there's a glitch with that, I can just abuse it. I asked them about their opinion on easy anti-cheat, and they had this to say. I mean, if you keep your cheat private, if you're like me and Mel, all your cheats are private, except for like maybe a couple friends, I don't think it's a big deal, but if you want to like go large scale and make like a huge bot and have a huge user base, that's not going to happen. You know, I think they just went absolutely overboard. I think if they would have went with Game Guard or just slapped Hack Shield back on it, it would have been more ideal. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into EAC that is going to affect the user end as a whole. Because mm -hmm. there's certain stuff 
with EAC that's very intrusive that I don't think people realize. Now EAC is very good for combating your average hacker, seeing as it is owned by Epic Games currently and is used by a number of companies, some of which you will likely recognize. However, like Pluck said, it is pretty intrusive and causes a number of issues with Arcage itself if it is poorly implemented by Gamigo and their team. Ever since the Borderlands 3 drama, I was very apprehensive about EAC being implemented in an Arcage Unchained. Due to the issues that I've had with it in other games, and also the issues I've been told about that are currently happening on the public test server. If you've been playing the public test server since it went public, you might have noticed some of what I'm about to mention, but you may not realize just how deep the EAC rabbit hole can go. The Arcage specific issues I've heard of are how borderless window mode isn't actually borderless at all, cursor placement is off due to the resolution squish of the fake borderless windowed mode, general latency frame problems, not being able to launch the game, and other minor annoyances. I took a deep dive into the forums of other games that have EAC and they have reported performance issues as well, but they've also brought to light some more issues I was previously unaware of. I'm sure some of you have heard EAC has a keylogger through rumors amongst these communities, but that seems to be false seeing as a number of people in different communities looked for the keylogger and found nothing. What I did find is EAC has a lot of issues with other programs a lot of it gamers use, such as motherboard RGB syncing apps, Steam Play, and Discord. One of the most intrusive features I found during this deep dive was that EAC has the potential to take in-game screenshots of your computer. While I was able to find proof that this feature exists, I was unable to find the part claiming that they only do this in CSGO tournaments or other esports events on their website. The RGB syncing applications apparently can cause false negatives with EAC and give you fat blue screens. Steep play seems to not work in general with EAC due to it thinking you're running on a virtual machine, and Discord seems to have a bit of a history with EAC, none of it being good. Many people have had crash to desktop issues, blue screens, and other issues. However, Discord's overlay in the past was used by hackers on Apex Legends as an injector for their cheats. EAC is even on a blacklist for government computers due to the fact that it reads your computer's memory, which is honestly pretty reasonable, speaking as somebody who was once in the army and we were heavily restricted on what we were allowed to download onto government computers. Now that might be a lot of information to process, so I'll do a quick summary based on my own opinion with the knowledge that I now have after talking to hackers and reading hundreds of forum posts about EAC and even looking into a little bit about how EAC works. I truly believe that EAC will prevent most hackers from cheating, however it will affect the average player quite a bit as well. Will hackers get past EAC? Definitely. It's more a matter of time than anything else, but also heavily depends on how well Gamigo uses EAC and how it is implemented into Arcade Unchained. Paladins is a game that also uses EAC, but there is a free cheat you can download that gets past EAC very easily, so obviously EAC isn't perfect. I do think it is a bit much for a game as unstable as Arcade is, as it will only add to the number of potential issues, like the crash to the desktop issues on the public test server being caused by the Razer Chroma SDK service, which is literally solved just by disabling the service. Do I think EAC is good for the game? Maybe. Gamigo has addressed a few issues involving hackers with the implementation of Arcade Unchained and EAC, such as you now have to pay $20 for an account for Arcade Unchained, rather than it being free so it is a monetary concern for any would-be hacker, as well as not banning anyone that bypasses EAC on the PTS. They can see what types of hacks are being used beforehand, and they can put a signature on those clients and ban them when they are used on Arcage Unchained. I don't see hacking ruining Arcage Unchained, but I do see EAC making the average player frustrated with the number of issues and just how invasive the client can be. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. If you happen to be a streamer, be careful clicking on other videos on my channel, as they aren't quite as PG as this one is. However, the end cards on your screen now are larger projects I've made in the past and are safe to watch. One being my submission to an Arcage Creator Contest in the past, which I got disqualified for because there was a Power Ranger outfit in it. Figure that. And the other one being a highlight reel of funny edits from past Arcage videos, which gives you a pretty good idea of some of the funnier things that can happen in an Arcage if you are unsure about playing the game yourself.